Hello. Today, as we've promised, we are going to weave such a small, minimalistic cup. A couple of words about the form. For some reason, both my friends and their purchasers prefer a small cup like this. I have woven cups of various forms, but based on the buyer's desires, I've chosen this one. Sometimes I use different forms. I'd like to show you the most popular ones. Here's my basic form. And when I need something bigger, this one is fine too. I've tried a few options based on what I had at hand and chosen this one. It is rather heavy and convenient. I've wrapped the ceramic, ceramic cup with a painter's tape. It has taken me quite a while to remember what I did it for, because it was long ago. Finally, I've recollected the reason. The weight I put inside used to slide while I was weaving, which was inconvenient. This way it gets faster and better, which makes it easier to work with this kind of wrapping. Let me tell you a few words about my experiments. This item has been woven in a normal two-tube rope technique, just like here and there. But then I felt like trying printed cotton weave with thicker tubes. I was wondering which cup would look nicer. Well, I believe it's obvious that this small cup woven from thin tubes looks more harmonious. Here I've got both thicker tubes, and since I've already planned a design with wrapping both here and, and on the top, I don't like this transition much. Well, the weaving itself is nice, but to my mind there are too many different types of weaving. So I've chosen such a minimalistic cup. As for the bottom, lately I prefer the one like this. A Japanese cherub blossom. Can you see it? I take five tubes, bend them and start laying them like this. And lay the last tube, after which I lead the last tube through the first two. And the previous one like this. As a result I get such a star. Now pull the tubes tighter very neatly to avoid breaking or deforming them. Be very careful. this way. And then very neatly, gradually tightening, I'm getting such a flower. After this I press it thoroughly in order to get it flat. And start entwining, hugging the double tubes of the base at first. Later on I'll distribute them. I've united two tubes and start weaving. Mm. 
Normal two tube rope. So I make a transition. Let's win V one more row. Tighten. We've closed the windows because there is air alert again. We are still living on in our old reality when in the middle of the day rocket missiles are flying toward us killing people. Recently one of the local enterprises during the working day has been hit by the missiles. They have destroyed part of the enterprise where people were working. Some people were killed. Air alerts is our current reality. We hear them a few times a day. Sometimes more and sometimes less often. But we keep working and hoping for the victory. Oops, I've been talking too much, so I've missed the point of transition, sorry. I'll try not to get distracted anymore. I had to make a transition here. Those who do read know about these transitions at the end of every row very well. I have to confess that sometimes I miss them when I weave a big item. So here is my transition. I don't always un unweave the clothes to make a transition, but I try to. I do my best to make everything neat. So this is my fourth row. I finish the row, after which I'm going to distribute the tubes, hugging every tube separately. In order to avoid mistakes and not to calculate the rows every time, I mark the starting point. When the item is thick, this way, and when it's thin, with a thin pin like this. So, the row has been closed. I mark the starting point and continue working. Close the row here and continue. So, I've woven a few rows and now I feel it's hard for me to continue working like this. I have to reduce the intervals between the tubes of the base a little. I've called this cut minimalistic on purpose. It requires a minimal number of tubes and motions. I divide the tube into three parts and add them to weaving. I don't need long tubes since I'm going to cut them off later anyway. 
The third part is quite sufficient. So approximately like this. I'm inserting additional tubes in order to make the weaving process easier. I'm not going to separate them, just add them to make the item neater. The circle diameter is becoming bigger. However, I still have to weave two or three rows to reach the required diameter. If it becomes inconvenient to weave, I sometimes add the tube, a short one as well, to make it easier. Now the diameter is sufficient. Let's finish the work. I have to tuck the tails in neatly. I do it like this, one and two. Tuck it in, zip, and here. These additional tubes make the weaving dance. I like it this way. Now I'm going to perform the finishing of this work. I've got a separate masterclass on the way I do. The only difference is that it seems neater to add only one tube. But let me prepare everything and show you. I'm preparing the bands like this. I don't cut the tails so far. I used to, but then I've decided it is better if I cut them during the weaving process. So, got it. Now I take one tube. Let's compare. Here I was using two tubes. This time I'm trying to do with one tube. Adjoin it. If the item is big, because I have also made some large cups, two tubes come in handy. In case of a smaller cup like this, I've tried applying one tube and I like the result. So let's start in a normal way. You can watch the whole process of even a bolster like this in a masterclass. Now I'm only going to show you the difference, I mean adding only one tube. I like this type of a boil, bolster, let me tell you a couple of words even if I repeat myself. Because it fastens these tails, I entwine them into the very structure which makes it strong enough. Take a look, please. You can already see how thin it is. Lengthen the tube and here at the end I'm going to cut. Well, let me show you right now. I can already see where my interval finishes, this way. After this it's going to continue like this and I'll cut it here and so on. So the edge has been trimmed. Now let's try the form on. I see that I have to insert the tubes approximately where I was distributing the poles. Well, let's indent a little. I mark it somewhere around this point. 
Now let me tell you a couple of words about the possible options. I've chosen this very way of inserting the tubes because my cup is going to be minimalistic. I've tried a few options. One of them is leading the tubes like this. Or you can collect the tubes, uh, some tubes during the weaving process and leave them. I know some weavers do it like this. However, I value my personal comfort a lot. So from the egoistic point of view, I also take into account uh, that very few people turn the cup over looking at these tiny stitches. They are almost invisible. You have to look thoroughly in order to notice them. So that's why I've chosen this variant of inserting the tubes for weaving a cup. Let me show it to you in more detail. So, here is my front side. So, one and two. It's easy for me this way, so I've chosen easiness as the main reason for inserting the tubes like this. I mean I'm weaving my circle in a convenient way without the need to pay attention to other things. And perform the wrapping without being distracted by the tubes sticking out. And it is only now when I insert the tubes. As you can see, the stitches fit the rock. Well, they are visible a little, I agree. But one more advantage of adding the tubes like this is that I'm sure they are not going to slide out. I don't have to glue them or anything. They are fastened in the very structure and are sure to stay where they are. So the cup and the saucer will not get separated in any case. So insert the tubes. In order to make them double, I insert two tubes into every gap. And continue this way until the end. So this way I'm getting double tubes of the base. The tubes of the base have been inserted. Try the form on. The best way is definitely to leave it overnight, but the advantage of this cup is that you can weave it during one evening. That's why I'm not going to leave it overnight. Let's continue weaving right away. However, I did like the result very much when I left the workpiece overnight, having tied the tubes to the form and letting them fasten this way. Well, it was better that way, but anyway, it's quite fine like this too. I'm going to weave a couple of rows, bending the tubes of the base toward myself a little. After this, I'll insert the form, which will make it easier to weave afterwards. I've woven a couple of rows in the rope-like technique. Now I'm building the structure again to make it easier. Insert the form, put some weight inside. And straightening the tubes, continue weaving a two-tube rope. I'm weaving and to avoid forgetting about the transition, I mark the starting point of the row like this. So 
so I have made the transition and continue in a normal rope like technique. Here where the weaving starts widening and the intervals between the tubes of the base become bigger again, it's worth adding one more tube to keep the weaving dense. This additional tube will play one more role, you'll see it later. I add one tube to each group of two tubes. I'm getting such a thin and delicate cup. So let's finish. One, two. This mark has kept me from mistakes. I've woven everything neatly. Finish in the same way as we did with the saucer. I usually do it like this here and here. Tuck the tubes of the base in. I mean, we repeat all the same steps we've taken for the saucer. One, and two. Now you'll see what we will need this additional tube for. Sometimes these ones remain too short. As for this longer one, I'm going to use it for wrapping. I cut all the excess short tails off. Sometimes, by the moment I finish weaving, there are no more tails left. I've cut all the unnecessary tails, take the form out this way. It's time to reassemble the structure tool, as I don't need it anymore. Now we are going to perform the wrapping again. Bend the tubes again. As I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to cut the tails off in the process of working. I've got one more tube of the base and start wrapping the edge again in a familiar way but with a single tube. Wrapping the tails remaining from the tubes of the base of the cup. So the feather process is quite clear. I've already shown it to you. Now we are applying all the same steps to the top. I cut off the tails meanwhile and continue working. Finish the wrapping. This way, and the last coil. Uh, 
and tuck it in like this. Cut off and the cup is ready. So I've got such a cup. Now the last stage before treating is to create such a handle. For the handle I insert such a thin, thin coated wire into the tube. For such a small cup, the length of one tube is sufficient without lengthening. One more tube, let's straighten it. This way. For a small cup like this, four tubes are enough. I insert wire into two of them. I take one tube with a piece of wire inside and the second one without. Spread some glue and insert from one side this way and here from the other side. Well, you can add some more glue. Let's insert the tube with the wire inside at the edge and the soft one in the center. The two couples of tubes are situated close to each other. Insert a working tube like this and start weaving with it neatly. It's a normal handle with no sophistications. Make sure everything is covered neatly here too. And along the whole lens. Lens and only the working tube. Hide the joint and continue weaving until the end of the tubes of the base. I have woven until the end, cut off the tails. I don't apply any glue because I'm starting to roll the handle right away. This is what I needed wire for. It would be impossible to roll it like this without it. I roll the handle in a dense and sharp way, deforming the tubes. Let's try it on. The handle mustn't be big. It has to harmonize with a small cup. I 
I fasten it like this. How do I do? I drop some universal polymeric adhesive from the side and from below. Make sure the handle is positioned evenly, not slantwise like this, but evenly. That's all. Check if the glue has been applied where it is supposed to. It is. I usually fasten it like this here and leave it overnight. Tomorrow I'll be able to prime it already. So I've got such a minimalistic cup. It can be used not only as a candy box. My latest order was a flower cash pot. The cash pot turned out very creative. Both my friend who has ordered it and I like it. So I wish you all the best. I hope you like this cup. There are plenty of them, but I especially like this one because it's so minimalistic. Nothing in excess, but it looks quite interesting. And let me announce the next masterclass. We are going to view such a tray or a panel picture if you prefer. See you!